Hey everybody, RetroPie Guy here. Today I'm going to show you guys how to use your Nintendo Wii Remote along with the Mayflash Dolphin Bar as a light gun controller on RetroPie. So I've done a video in the past, actually I've done a couple videos in the past showing this process, but I've done it on an older build. So I'm going to do this today on my 512 gigabyte build because it's a little bit different. It's got a different version of RetroArch on it. It's got a different version of RetroPie on it. So it does differ ever so slightly. Uh, sometimes you'll be able to get your games up and running using my older tutorial. Sometimes with certain games you won't. So I'm going to jump into three separate light gun games today after I get the initial setup process completed. And I'm going to show you guys exactly how you can go into certain games and make adjustments and get your light guns up and running. So each game may differ slightly, so you may have to kind of try each of these uh, different techniques when trying to get your light guns up and running on certain games, but this is going to cover all of our bases. So between this video and my original video, I'm confident that you will be able to get your Wii Remote and your Mayflash Dolphin Bar connected together with RetroPie and up and running for all your light gun games. So let's dive into it. All right, so here I have my Raspberry Pi 4, 4 gigabyte RAM version, and I already have my RetroPie 512 gigabyte image on my micro SD card slid into my micro SD card slot on the Raspberry Pi 4. Now, I do wanna mention before we proceed, I don't recommend ever using a Raspberry Pi 4 like this. This is my floating Raspberry Pi 4. I use this for testing and um, uh, just going through different tutorials and stuff like that. So I would never use this for actual gaming like this. I would use this inside of a cooling fan case that would keep everything nice and cool. This is going to warm up very quickly like this. So again, make sure that you get yourself a cooling fan case that you can use with your Raspberry Pi 4 for emulation gaming. So we're gonna start making our connections. I'm gonna just connect my micro uh, HDMI cable in first. Then I'm gonna grab my regular gamepad controller. This is a Super Nintendo style wired controller. You don't have to use this exact controller. You can also use your regular Bluetooth uh, wireless controllers if you'd like as well. So uh, obviously if you're using wireless controllers, then you don't have to go ahead and make the connection just yet. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna grab our Mayflash Dolphin Bar. I've got that right here. I'm going to grab this and I'm gonna plug this into the USB 3 port on here. So there's two USB 3 ports. They're the blue ones. I'm gonna go into the top one. Doesn't make a difference which one you go into. Make sure it's a USB 3 port though, not the regular ones which are on the uh, first row. That's where I actually have my controller plugged in. Next thing we're gonna do is we are gonna boot this up. So I'm gonna connect my power supply cable and this one's gonna start booting up automatically here. You can see lights up, you should have a green light and uh, red light. The green will kind of go on and off as you boot up. So next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab my Wii remote here and we're actually going to sync that up with the Mayflash Dolphin Bar. So mine's already synced up, I just have to power this on and you're gonna see that they're already synced. But if you need to sync these from scratch, hit your sync button on here, open up your back panel where your batteries are on your Wii remote and hit the red button there. Hit them both at the same time, they'll sync up in a matter of seconds. You wanna make sure that you're on mode two. You can see the two button is lit up here. Um, you can change that by just tapping your mode button and there's two. Take a look at your Wii remote and you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you're on one and two for your lights. A little hard to see there, but you can see one and two are lit up. Now, if you change your mode, sometimes it will cause RetroPie to crash. So don't be alarmed if that happens. Just go ahead and reboot your Raspberry Pi and uh, you'll be good to go there. All right, so you can see here I rebooted. I'm swapping out the um, screens here just to make it a little bit easier to see what I'm doing on screen as opposed to being down here in the bottom right corner. So next thing we're gonna do here is we're gonna just make sure that we power on our Wii Remote, make sure that you're in mode two on your Mayflash Dolphin Bar, as well as having you know lights one and four lit up on your Wii Remote. So I'm gonna actually mount this now underneath my TV. Just make sure that you have that toggle switched to either top or bottom, depending on where you're mounting this on your TV. I'm mounting it underneath my TV, so I have it set to bottom. Just gonna go ahead and put it on the mount. So now what we're going to do is we're going to open up our main menu with our gamepad controller. Again, your regular gamepad controller, not your Wii Remote. 
and we're going to go down to configure input. We're going to select that with A. It's going to say, are you sure you want to configure input? We're going to go ahead and select yes. So now you're going to come to this configure input screen. Now we're going to take our Wii remote and hold down any of the buttons on here. I'm just going to hold down the plus. You're going to see keyboard populate into that little rectangle screen there, and it's going to bring you right into your configuring page. This is where we're going to map the controls on our actual Wii remote. So for D-pad up, we're going to hit our D-pad up. For D-pad down, we're going to hit D-pad down. For D-pad left, we'll hit D-pad left, and D-pad right, we'll hit D-pad right. Now for start, we're going to hit our one down here. So I'm going to hit one. For select, we're going to hit two. For our A button, we are going to hit our home button right here in the center. And for B, we're going to hit our minus. Now we're going to skip all of these options and go down to the final option, which is going to be our hotkey. So I'm just going to hold down the minus. You can hold down any button that you've already mapped and it's going to skip over each time that you hold it down, it'll skip over the option. So we're going to just skip all of these because none of these pertain to, um, you know, any of the mapping for this particular Wii remote. And we're going to go all the way down to hotkey. So here I have hotkey enable highlighted. I'm just going to hit the two button. And now we're going to confirm this by hitting our A button, which is our home button on our Wii remote. So it's going to take a couple seconds. Once we're into our main menu here, you can test this out. Just go up and down with your D-pad and you know that everything is working properly. So I'm going to put this aside. I'm going to use my gamepad controller here just to get out of this main menu. And I'm going to actually put my Wii remote now into this light gun casing. That's actually what makes this into a really nice light gun. So just slides into it like that. Flip the little tab up on the end. The only thing I will say is just be super careful with these. They obviously look very much like a real firearm, so don't go outside with them, don't point them at anybody, just be safe. Um, so continuing on here, we're gonna jump into some light gun games now, and I'm gonna show you guys how we actually set this up. So I'm going to move the camera just to make this a little bit easier for navigating purposes. And we're gonna go into, I actually have on this particular build, a light gun specific collection. If you don't have a light gun specific collection, just go into MAME. That's usually where you're gonna find the majority of your light gun games. So here I have my light gun collection. I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna show you guys how to set this up with a couple different uh, games because there's a couple different ways that we have to do this. Unfortunately, it's not super straightforward um, in all cases. Sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't. But with this particular version that I'm showing you on today, it's a little complicated. So we're gonna go into Alien 3, the gun first. I'm going to hit my A button on my regular gamepad controller here to launch the game. And we're gonna let it load up first. So now you can see that the game is loaded in. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go and we're gonna hit select and X on our gamepad controller at the same time. That's gonna open up RetroArch and we're going to hit our B button to back out one and we're gonna go over to the second column which is settings and we're gonna drop down to input. Now once we're in here, we're gonna go down to port one binds towards the bottom. We're gonna go ahead and select port one binds and we're gonna go down to, um, these are all of our mappings in here, but we're gonna go down to where we see on the left column there, a light gun icon. And the first option is gun trigger. So we're gonna select that with our A button on our gamepad controller. We're gonna grab our light gun and we're gonna pull the trigger. You can see it populates in as mouse one. Next thing we're gonna do is we'll go down with the D-pad here. We're gonna go and highlight gun reload, select it with A. And we're going to assign a button. I just chose the plus button as the button I want to assign, but you can set it to whatever you want for reload. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to select gun aux A, and we're going to assign that to our A button. You can assign these however you want. The only one that you have to follow me 100% on there is obviously the trigger. The trigger is the trigger. Um, you can map these other options if you want. I like to use the gamepad controller though to um, you know, sometimes set up games and, and also exit them. So I don't go crazy trying to map too much onto the actual Wii remote here. Uh, so I'm just gonna leave it as those three. 
The next thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to hit my select and X. That's going to get me out of RetroArch and back into the game. So now I can pull my trigger on my Wii Remote here and I'm going to be able to get right into the game. So I'm going to back away a little bit and we're going to use this on screen. All right, so you can see it's tracking nicely on screen. We'll pull the trigger. And we'll check the A button as the uh, secondary weapon. And that's the grenade, so it's working perfectly on here. So we're gonna jump out of this game. In order to do so, we'll just take the other gamepad controller and we're gonna hit start and select up here at the same time to jump out. All right, so we just did Alien 3 the gun. I wanna show you guys another way to do this. We're gonna go into Operation Wolf to show you guys how you might have to set it up with certain games like this particular one. So we're gonna let the game load in. The beginning process is gonna be very much the same as what we just did with Alien 3 the gun. So we'll let the game load in and we'll hit X and select on our gamepad controller. This opens up RetroArch, same as before. We'll hit B, we'll navigate to the right in order to go into our settings column. And now we're gonna drop down to input. We'll select that with A. And we're gonna go down to port one binds. Select that with A. And up here at the top it says device type. We're gonna move this over to light gun. Now we're gonna drop down to our light gun mappings. So first one is gun trigger, we'll select that. And you may need to move your gun up so it's actually catching the sensor. I'm a little bit close for this video, so it took me a couple tries there. Uh, next, we'll go down to gun reload. We'll select a button on here, whichever one you want. Um, same thing with gun augs A. I'll just hit the A here. Now, you want to make sure with this particular game that you go in and you set up your start and select. The reason for this is since we changed this over to light gun, once we exit RetroArch, this gamepad is no longer going to work for anything other than our hotkey. So we need to have the start added in here. So we'll go ahead and hit A. I'm going to assign it to, I'm actually going to do it as my home button here, which um, I don't think that I did before. No, I did the plus and the A. So just make sure that you uh, use it as a um, button that you haven't already mapped. And then I'm going to go in here for select and I'm going to hit d-pad down. Now you can do this however you want, just remember what you map each function to. So that's all we need to do here. We're gonna hit select and X on our gamepad controller to exit. And now I'm gonna move back. Now I should be able to see movement on screen. If I pull the trigger, it fires. So I'm going to um, go ahead and hit start. Operation. That's gonna start the game. So we're gonna test this out. So you can see it works perfectly. So to exit, I'm just gonna take my regular gamepad controller, start and select, still works great for uh, that hotkey function. So that's another game that we were able to set up here. Last one I wanna test out is Terminator 2 Judgment Day, which is one of my favorite light gun games. So we're gonna let this load in, just like we have so far with everything. And we're going to do the same thing, select and X to jump into RetroArch. From here now, we are gonna go down to uh, options right off the first page. And we wanna make sure that we have enable in-game mouse enabled on here. So you can see that the little toggle is all the way to the right. So I have that turned on. 
if you click on it with your A button here, you're gonna see that it's on on for me. Yours might be set to off, just make sure that it's set to on. We'll back out once we have done that, back out again, back out again, and we're gonna go into our settings column again, just like we've done previously. We'll go into input, and we're gonna go down to port one binds. We're gonna leave this set on retro pad there, and we're gonna go down to our light gun mappings. First option is gun trigger, select it, pull the trigger, reload, select it. You can assign whatever button you want on here. Now for gun augs A, B, or C, I forget exactly what this particular game um, has it as for like the grenade launching. So I'm not sure. I don't think it's augs A. I could be wrong. I'm going to just do it um, and see, but you may have to play around with that. You can certainly do your start and select on here as well if you want to, but your gamepad controller is going to work uh, for start and all that good stuff if you need to use it uh, because we haven't changed that device type over to light gun for this one we're going to be leaving it on retro pad so that's all we need to do here select an x to jump into the game and we're going to test this out all right so on screen you can see the light gun is tracking beautifully we're going to go ahead and pull the trigger or hit start uh, actually it's the plus button for me here um, so we're going to test this out and see how this works. It's already shooting. Way to go. Very accurate. So everything is working great on here, so we're going to exit it out. We had start and select on our gamepad controller. That takes us right back out to our light gun menu, and we are good to go. All right, guys, if you're this far into the video, chances are you were successful with getting your light gun games up and running here with one of these techniques. Unfortunately, it's not super straightforward, and it is a little bit complicated, so I do apologize for that, but unfortunately, that's how it goes sometimes with emulation, especially with older arcade games, which is what light gun games tend to be a part of. So different process sometimes for different games. You just have to go in and kind of test them out one by one and see what works. But with these three demonstrations today for these three different light gun games, you should be able to use at least one of them, um, one of the techniques rather, to get your light gun games up and running. So if you have any questions, feel free to hit me up in the comment section below. I'll do my best to get back to you with any questions or concerns or advice, anything like that. So I'll do my best to get back to you. That's going to do it for today, though. You know the drill. Smash the like button if you enjoyed this video and you found it helpful today. And, of course, hit the subscribe button to stay in the loop for everything Retro Pie Guy in the future here on YouTube. That's going to do it again. Thank you guys so much for watching.